Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 94. This episode is the delightful light of a human being, TJ Storm, who is somebody I could have talked to for hours, but as a DM, he had a game to play in a few hours, so, you know, had to give him a little time to do that. But he is so cool and so talented in so many different areas, which is super fun to talk about. Uh, We talk about him being from Hawaii, how he got into martial arts, how he was a professional dancer, then moved to Los Angeles, and then how that fed into him loving kung fu movies, trying out acting, getting involved in that. Flash forward a few years, he got to fight Jet Li in a movie. What? So cool. He's also a, uh, a Hall of Fame martial artist. He's in the World Hall of Fame for martial arts. How cool is that? And you're like, hmm, he can't get much cooler. Oh, wait, he can. Uh, he talks about motion capture and all the work that he's done there. And he breaks down different kinds of performance capture uh, for video games and whatnot that I had no idea about. We talk about our favorite superheroes. And you can't talk to TJ Storm and not bring up D&D. TJ's been playing for 40 years. I haven't even been alive that long. But it's so cool to hear stories about when it first came out. Unfortunately, what happened to uh, his original books and dice. But you know what? We'll get into that. We talk about his great check system that he learned from a friend. Why he prefers DMing. He's got some great D&D stories as well. Uh, You can check him out as Godzilla in Godzilla King of Monsters. What? I know. He's Darth Vader in Vader Immortal. Yep. And for anyone who is looking to get into uh, performance capture or anything like that, He is the founder of the Mind's Eye Tribe, which is an action actors academy. Definitely check it out. It's super cool. Uh, Almost as cool as the man himself. So let's get right into it. Here is the interesting podcast, episode number 94 with TJ Storm. Roll the theme song. This is the fun of podcasting is just trying to figure out scheduling in it. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing the podcast? It's been next month will be four years. Wow. That's I, awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's not bad. It's not bad. And I've only had maybe three or four return guests so far. So it's been. Seriously? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Whoa. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's just a, neat a little... lot of guests, man. How often do you do it? Dude. Uh, well, so. I have it. I don't have a set release schedule because uh, when you have a show that's about people uh, scheduling, it can be a bit. So you don't want to like stress yourself out being like a new show every week just in case you can't get it out. Okay. Um, but yeah, you. I try every week when I got them. Um, right now is really good because I've got quite a few banked and whatnot. Uh, awesome. Man. But yeah, it's just cool. It's a neat little way that I get to you know get to know people and whatnot, and it's just fun. It's all right. about people in it. Dude. That's awesome, man! Congratulations. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you for a long time. Oh, dude. hell yeah. This is going to be great. Dude, so, dude you, you're in California. Fun. Yes. Fun. How was San Diego? It was a blast. It was an absolute blast. The The Comic-Con is always fun. I, my favorite part is just watching the multitudes of people in all of their different gear and then just getting lost in all of the uh, all, all of the exhibits and, and comics and stuff like that. I love to see what's coming up next. Yeah. I love to see all the fun stuff because I'm a fan of all this stuff. And uh, a lot of people, they go to Comic-Con, but it's kind of like a Instagram event for them. Sure, sure. But for me, I just have a freaking blast because I was going there before anybody knew who I was, and I, I absolutely loved it. Sure. I've never been. It's like the Mecca that I'm like, one day. Oh, so cool. One well, day. Now, where do you go? What what places do you go to? So I'm in Florida, actually. So that's really fun. Um, I think we're coming to Florida, at least for Godzilla. It, it's Orlando something something. Sweet. You're going to be there? Yes. It's going to be uh, – I've got to check my calendar. But it's – is it a Monster Con? The Orlando – Look what it is. Okay. It is okay. uh, the weekend of the October 12th. Oh, and right on. Yeah, it'll be really, really fun. 
Dude, Orlando, it, it's a good place. It's a, it's a good place. Florida, it's like you've got Miami. So, like, I'm in Naples, which Where is, is that? It's like if you take Miami, right, and you go okay. directly to the other coast, it's right okay. there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on like the same latitude, whatever the bottom that goes left to right is, that one. <laughs> nice. Is it is it warm all year long? It's humid all year long. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It That's be, cool. I mean, it beats snow. That's for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Mm, I'm from North the... Carolina, and I'm like, eh, that was enough snow for me. It's, uh, oh, I didn't even know snowed in North Carolina. It does. Not a lot, thank God, but just okay. enough to not want to see it again. <laughs> I can it's totally cold. understand that. <laughs> totally understand that. Dude, are you from California? Uh, no, I grew up, I, I was born in Indiana, and I grew up in Hawaii, in Honolulu, Hawaii. What? And, uh, that's yeah, different. That's, it's, the, it's, uh, it's the best. <laughs> it is the best. You go, you go to the beach every day if you want. It is absolutely amazing. And I lived in Waikiki, so I was really, really close to the beach. And, yeah, uh, yeah I, went, I, I moved to California uh, when I was a kid. Uh, well, probably, I don't know, 19, 20 years old. When, and uh, it was system shock. It, totally, totally different world. Like much that. faster, much more hectic, but I loved it. Sure. Did you move there for acting or – because I've talked to some people that like grew up in Hawaii and they were like, you know, there's yeah. a very island mentality, but also sometimes you can feel like you're trapped. So, um, you, you yeah, they live, uh, island fever. Uh, ah, yes. but, but the truth is I went there for for uh, I did everything that I could do kind of in Hawaii as a dancer. And I wanted to right. do more and more and more. So I, I went to L.A. because I wanted to do music videos and all kinds of fun stuff like that and, and dance with all of the famous people that I saw in music videos and on television. Yeah. And I did. I got to train with them and I got to do some music videos. And it was really, really fun. I was a professional dancer for a while. Dude, that sounds awesome. It was amazing. It was really cool. Right on. So then when did you make the foray into acting then? Um, dancing is hard yeah. and largely thankless, uh, beyond the absolute, uh, joy you get out of it yourself. Sure. If that's, that's what you kind of get out of it is, is just loving the art itself and practicing for hours and hours and hours a day and nailing the scene and hearing the crowd cheer. But man, you go home and that's kind of the end of that. And nobody knows your name and you do all that work. And, and I did that for years and I, I loved it. And then. I was like, um, what else is there? I, I got signed to a record deal just oddly. It Dude. was just random. I was getting my hair cut, and the guy next to me goes, hey, you have a good look. You sing? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> no. Of course. No, I do not sing. <laughs> the, the truth is I do not sing. I was tone deaf as hell. But he's like, well, how do you feel about a record deal? I'm like, um, can I bring my friends? Sure. I, my cousin and my friend really, really sing, and I couldn't. So – we did that. We totally got screwed out of our record deal. Even though it got on the radio, we had two songs on the radio. We there got, you go. We had a concert tour. It was really fun. It was a cool life Dude. for like a year, but totally got screwed out of it. Yeah. So I was like, eh, you know what? I'll try acting. How hard could it be? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're a professional dancer, and then you're like, I'll be a pop star for a little bit, and then eh, yeah, let's try something easy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was exactly worst worst jump to jump cut ever. But <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. I gotta say, I because of my martial arts background and my dance background, I was able to choreograph action uh, with not a lot of uh, study. I got everything. I understood it. I understood the punches, the kicks, the timing, and and what the camera kind of needed to see. What I didn't understand was acting. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it's a little important. It's kind of half of it. <laughs> Could not act to save my life, but I didn't know. So that was the that was the good part. There you go. Will uh, for ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, I did a lot of kickboxing movies, and that was my film school. To be honest, I learned first off, I learned how to act by watching some of the movies. That, <laughs> um, but I learned how to make everything that I was learning on set, the stunt coordination, the choreography. The timing, the shot setup, uh, even acting to some extent by learning that I couldn't do it. I, I learned all of that stuff. And then after, I don't know, six or seven years of doing that, I went to acting school. And and then I, I probably should have done it in reverse. Not come to think of it. <laughs> I mean, it worked <laughs> out for you. If, it worked out. There's <laughs> <you know? laughs> one way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> what, so what martial arts did you do? Because I know you're in a little thing called the Hall of Fame. Um, yes. What? Yes. <laughs> 
What? Talk yeah. to me. How? Uh, ever since I was a little kid, my my mom actually put me into karate. Uh, cool. She that day when I was a little kid. It was mostly for coordination and energy management and discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to stay in it. It was hard and people tried to hit you. But yep, fair. she made me stay. And to make sure that I didn't sneak off, she joined the class. She was oh, down there. She got you. White belts. Yep. And, and I was like, oh, man, <laughs> if she's doing it. I got to do it better. <laughs> You're right. So, so I did it. I, I stayed. Uh, after a while, I started to realize, hey, if you practice a thing, you get better at a thing. And uh, I stayed and I stayed and I stayed. And I didn't really think about it. It was just part of my school day, to be honest. At the end of school, I'd walk over to karate and I'd do karate. And I never quit. I, I came to L.A. I transferred uh, karate styles. Then I went to taekwondo. Then I added northern Shaolin kung fu. Then I added Ooh. capoeira, jutsu ninjutsu, burushin jujitsu. I started adding lots of styles to my daily practice. Dude. And it ended up that I ended up, you know, doing – Maybe eight hours of practice a day. That's what I did. Wow. I'd work, and then I'd practice, and then I'd practice and work, and then eventually practice became work. I became a teacher uh, later, and I loved it. And eventually I got nominated into uh, the Martial Art Masters Hall of Fame, and I've been inducted into uh, seven or eight uh, Masters Hall of Fames, but it's been you know a lifetime of dude work and it's wonderful I'm, I'm super honored to be part of that and part of that world and it's given me so much i continue to teach here in los angeles uh, uh i teach the martial arts and we also teach motion capture performance which is uh at a school called the mind's eye tribe oh here. yes i uh, am familiar yeah <laughs> that's so cool dude see there's a lot of movement threads i'm seeing here you got dance you got martial arts this you know it, it makes a lot of sense now i'm seeing with the cool stuff you're up to it's really fun. It's really fun, and I'm really fortunate to get to do all of this stuff and keep movement in my life. Sure, sure. So when you're training like that, what do you eat? Everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the souls of your enemies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, uh, you know, when, when I'm getting ready for a film, if, if I'm going to be on a, a film where I'm in person, usually it's, it'll be oftentimes action, so I'll, uh, I'll diet down for that stuff, and eat very, very clean, which means uh, very little carbs except for fuel, usually bef- directly before and or after working out. Uh, when I say work out, I mean the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I eat relatively clean, which means lower carbs except for Sundays, and I become a sugar vacuum cleaner there you on go. Sundays. You got to live a little. Oh, yeah. Reese's peanut butter cups and yes. red lips and everything else, especially when I go to the movies. It's my favorite. Our kindred spirits. Yes. Same, 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 same. I've always wondered that whenever someone has like a strict training regimen, I was like, okay, what do you eat? Because I like to eat. And, uh, it's Wait, a, what do you eat? Everything. Dude, I am not a healthy person. <laughs> I have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to people and live vicariously through your stories. <laughs> yes. Yes. So do, you, so do you have a favorite style that you work on? Because I've, I've talked to a few people and it's a lot of that. They start like in one style. And then they add stuff later on, and it becomes like this perfect blender of like, oh, I can do uh, everything. Are you, are you mean martial arts? Yeah. Do you have like a, a one that you're like, you know what? When it gets when it gets really fun, I'm gonna whip out this one. Um, it depends. I I love having choices for film Fair. or or for video games because uh, if I'm in doing a Mortal Kombat type of video game, I want something exotic and and beautiful and and eye-catching or right. working in South Korea and they acquire a special uh, movement from me or a special character, I'll be like, oh, I think this more brutal style will fit this character. So let's let's go with this. We'll add a little Muay Thai, a little Krav Maga, yeah. uh, karate, and this will make the character seem powerful and brutal or, or whatever. And uh, for fighting, for the real world, you use your instincts. So yep. whatever style you've train the most will come up all by itself. It's not really a choice. I'm not going to be like, I shall defeat you with white lotus eyebrow kung fu. That's no, you right. don't never <laughs> do that. It just, you, you, you do what you've trained to do or what you haven't trained to do. Whatever yeah. comes to, to the front, that comes up. And that's why you train so hard so you don't have to think. So that's true. I use what is right for the situation or the project. I like it. Conditioned it, reflex response. 
you train often as well? I did martial arts. I studied kendo for like 10 years. And then oh, I wow. did, uh, I mean, I was like, you know what's practical these days? Using a sword. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. And then I did shore and rue for like three years. And uh, that was intense. But I, I wonder as well, because that's the whole thing is, you know, condition reflex response. You want to get to a point where you just react. Because if you're thinking, it's too slow. Absolutely. Uh, I remember my younger brother, he got bigger than me pretty quickly. And I was, okay. like, in the infantry in the, in the army. And I'm like, that's okay. You're still my little brother. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, I remember he got pretty he got pretty big pretty quickly. So I had to start thinking, uh, I had to start thinking smarter about it. Because I'm like, you know what? Physics are against me right now. So I need uh-huh. to use my surroundings. So one time, he got on top of me, and he was, like, chokeholding me, and I just smashed his head against the wall. And guess what? Whoa. It worked. Ouch. <laughs> Take that, physics. <laughs> so, Bingo! Exactly. Didn't think about it. Come to find out, that's the ace in the hole. So for anyone wondering, use your surroundings. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's my it's my call to fame. So now when he gets all testy with me, I'm like, you see that wall? Oh! oh. It doesn't, doesn't take a lot of oh. force. <laughs> It is harder than I do, and then I can One run. One brick. That's right. That's it. That's all it takes. <laughs> so do you do you like kung fu movies? Oh, my God. You got to, I, right? I grew up on them. I absolutely same. grew up on them. I love same. it. Same. Same. You got any favorites? Um, You know, I, I love – well, well there, there's, two, there's two major time periods we're talking about here. Yes, there's we are. old school, and then there's the newer school. Now, True. in the new school, the one that changed – the way that I looked at movie making and choreography, uh, my friend and I, Van, uh, he's one of the teachers at Mind's Eye Tribe, and he's a stunt coordinator here in Los Angeles, Van Ayasit, and he was a professional wrestler in Japan. Oh, um, sweet. We went to, we we're walking around Santa Monica. This is all, maybe 15 years ago. Walking around Santa Monica, and there's a, there's a, a theater there called the Lemley Theater. It's a little art house theater. Mm-hmm. It's the kind of theater that we never go to because they play art movies and we never watch art movies. Sure. We just watch blockbuster, Marvel movies, whatever. But we're walking past and we saw a Kung Fu poster. It says, tonight at midnight, this movie. I couldn't read the title because it was in Chinese. And we're like, hey, this looks like one of the old school Kung Fu movies. Let's check this out. He goes, okay. So we went, we ate, we came back, and it was midnight. And the theater was packed. Really? What the hell? When did old school kung fu movies get so popular? Sat down, and the title came up, and it was subtitled, and it was called Once Upon a Time in China. Ooh, and nice. It was Jet Li movie. First time I've ever heard of Jet Li. First time I've ever seen Upon a Time in China. If you haven't Dude, seen this, they're so good. It is. It is art. It is art in motion. Agreed. Agreed. It, and and the guy who I believe, if I'm if I'm not correct, I'm I don't know if I'm remembering this right, but the guy who did the action. For the Matrix, directed this. You and Wu Ping. And oh my God, we were looking at it like, what is happening? It was like watching your first Marvel movie, be- twenty years before Marvel. Yep, yep. And it was gorgeous and amazing, and the kung fu was spectacular. The art direction was beautiful. The lighting was spectacular. Everything was perfect, and we came out. Minds blown. We're like, no more. So uh, we found a place to study Shaolin. But at the same time, we absorbed everything Jet Li had ever done, everything Donnie Yin had done, oh, Sammo, my dude. Sammo Hung, Jackie Sammo Chan. Hung. Oh. Yep, yep. I, and, and to make a long story short, five years later, uh, we, we drove all the way to Texas just for a chance to work on a movie called Once Upon a Time and China Six, uh, oh. directed by Sammo Hung, starring Jet Li. What? And, yep. Did and you, we did got you work on, on it. it? <gasps> yep, got on it. Um, I I fight Jet Li. I'm the chieftain of the enemy tribe. Jet Li has amnesia. He thinks he's a Native American, and he doesn't know that he knows kung fu. So we fight, and it was freaking glorious. Oh my God! What is your <laughs> life? What? It's freaking awesome. <laughs> so lucky, man. So lucky. So awesome. Oh, Sammo Hung and Jet Li. And you got to fight yes. Jet Li. It wasn't even like you're just in his press. You got to go nope. for him. You got to fight him. It was freaking awesome. Oh freaking awesome. He, he's the man. He's 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 a demigod. What? Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing and a great learning experience as well. Dude, good thing you got into acting, huh? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> man.
Man, dude, Sammo Hung is next level legendary over there. Oh, so freaking Man. awesome. He's I, the bomb. I've heard so many great stories about him, like razzing stuntmen. He's like, I need you to really hit me. I was like, okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah Sammo Hung is exactly hardcore. Exactly like that. He is exactly like that. Dude, Doesn't that's so cool. He's what? awesome. Do you remember your first acting gig? Um, acting, acting, acting. Wow, that's a good question. Like, yeah, I do remember the first, <laughs> the first movie that I was one of the leads in. I was the bad guy in a movie called Dragon Fury. Do oh, not sweet. look this movie. <laughs> up. Hold on, let me write down Dragon Fury. Got it. <laughs> the okay. poster, if I remember correctly, this is the '80s. I repeat, this is the '80s. The poster <laughs> is me and my friend Robert Chapin. We're facing each other, holding swords up, staring at each other because we're about to uh, kill each other. And these swords are blocking the breasts of a headless woman directly behind us in the poster. I see. And that headless, not not missing her head. (laughs) Just her her body is the size of the the poster back, so you can't see what this would be. It's just she's standing there for some reason with no shirt and. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't ask questions back then, TJ. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> that is amazing. See, but not a lot awesome. of people have those things, you know. 80s was a great time <laughs> for, for any sort of promotion. World. Pure awesome. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. It was bananas. It, but it was it was really, really fun. I, it was basically a Terminator, so... The acting kind of worked back then because all I had to do was look kind of mean and walk around with a sword, and that was kind of it. That's the dream. I do remember it. It was – wow, I learned a lot, and it was really fun. That's so cool. See, I remember that you have one of those faces where I'm like, I've seen this person before, and I don't know from where, and it bugged me for months. And I was like, <laughs> something. I don't know what it is, and I just sit and I sit. So there was a time when my mom would watch these shows – and it was like, okay, huh? cool. And it was like, you know, Hercules and then like Xena. And then uh, there was a show about Conan. Yes! <laughs> and you were in yes! it. Dude. <laughs> you had different hair back then. I did. I wasn't braided. It wasn't braided. It was just down. It was just my, my hair. Dude. Down. And you had a goatee. That's cool. It made me look much older, actually. It made me look much older and much meaner. But yes, uh, Ralph Mueller uh, was a friend of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Ralph Mueller was... I think he's like a two-time Mr. Universe or something like that. Six yeah. foot eight. Of course, his as you do. shoulders are about three and a half feet apart. Oh. That's how tall he is. He's six <laughs> foot eight. And his shoulders, if you take your hands and you put them to either side of your head and you spread them as wide as you can, that is where his shoulders width is. I could stand – I'm six foot two. I'm a pretty big guy. Dude. If I stood directly behind him, you would not know I was there. That's how big <laughs> – He's like a human Clydesdale. You saw him in uh, maybe Gladiator. If you remember yes. the big guy who kind of defends uh, uh, the Gladiator himself, the the, the star, Maximus. and he gets shot with the arrows. Yep. As, yeah, that's, that was Ralph. That was Conan. Dude. And we shot that in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, 100 degrees plus 100% humidity Ooh. every day. Uh, and me and a guy named Danny Woodburn, he's a, 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 an actor, uh, we would – be his sidekicks and we'd follow him around and try to help him do stuff. It was hilarious and freaking awesome. Wow, you watch that show? Dude, I watch a lot of things you're going to be surprised at. That's amazing. <laughs> there's, a, there's weird times when I think, like, do you ever think back about, like, when you were a kid, what you watched and you're like, I don't know how I've seen Pootie Tang so many times. What? I yes. <laughs> I feel, how is that possible? Th- thank you. Thank you. I'm not I, alone here. Why? <laughs> I think about it all the time. And it's like, what? Was it just on? I feel like HBO maybe <laughs> like was just always on, and you'd randomly catch it, and you're like, oh, what is it? Pluto Nash. All right, all right. Yes. I watch Pluto Nash, yes. and I like this I movie. Re- <laughs> I remember a time when, when HBO when HBO first started, it only played two movies a day, and they would rotate. Yes. They would take two movies, and they would rotate them over and over and over, and I would watch them over and over and over. I can't tell you how many times I watched Flash Gordon. Yes. Flash. Dude. Oh, yep. One of us. It was the best. Amazing. The best. It's so weird how like uh, the viewing is now. You know, we have yes. to like. So, what's the thing you watched? Okay, hold on. Where before you're like, I don't know. I just put on the TV, and I've seen this now 
over and over. And that's the other weird thing is you just watch things over and over and over, not because you're like you'd seek it out, be like, I really want to watch this again. It was yeah. just like it's just what it does is on TV. You just watch just it. Bizarre. Yeah. Yep. Same. Yep. That's how it came. That it was like touched by an angel was another one. Yeah, I remember Dude, that. There was this other show that I don't remember the name of, but it was like a family sitcom. And they had like a, I think it was a rabbit maybe. It was a rabbit or a dog and it was a puppet. And it had sunglasses and the theme song was like Hit the Road Jack. What is it, I, don't, I have no idea, but it's in my head. It's there <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but it was like every night when I went to sleep, I just hear Hit the Road Jack and I'm like, oh, That's right, amazing. okay. It's not, it wasn't Alf, right? No, it wasn't Alf. It was like a, it was like a hand puppet. It's like a weird, I'm going to find That's it. That's so I'm, weird. I know, love it. I'm going to find it and I'm going to message you back and I'm like, this, yes, please. this yes. is what it was. So just weird things like I don't know. It's just on TV. It's like we had less selection back then for some reason. Yes, hmm. yes. And well, well, there were you. You couldn't choose what you wanted. But that's true. It's that's okay. True. We lived. That's true. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we right. yeah. that's true. My wife is still like that somehow. She's like, it's on TV. Let's watch it. I was like, we could just watch it. Like, just pick it. She's like, no, it's better if it's just on TV and we catch it. I was like, you it's know nice. There, you're right. It's really nice. Yeah, actually, it feels good. Yeah, you <laughs> just came into it and you're like, wow. You're like, I own it. It's on the shelf, but. It's on TV now, so... Can I tell you what I just discovered, though? Please. I, what I just saw on... It was an Amazon Prime. It was mm-hmm. a, a, t, a, a TV show, I guess. A Prime show called The Boys. Have you seen this? Okay, so everyone's telling me about it. I've heard it's incredible. Talk to me. Holy crap. Yeah? Is that good? I, I was at the... Okay, so San Diego Comic Con. Uh, my friend Crystal Martin, she is an actress. She's an actor, action actress. And... She's like, hey, you guys got to come visit visit me on uh, this thing. I'm working on the boys at Prime, oh. Amazon Prime. Come visit me at the uh, – uh, what do they call it? It's a, an event or, or something. It's, it's an event they keep on. It's a little, a little show. Uh-huh. So we go to the Amazon Prime Village, and there's a lot – it's a really impressive thing. And I went to the boys thing, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. It's kind of like uh, superheroes that are not the nicest people in the world and these – these people have dedicated themselves to calling them out on it. And that's what it's about. We watched oh, that. Oh, that's cool. Seems like a really cool idea. And I watched the show. Just finished it last night or the night before. Holy crap. It is great. Yeah? See it. Oh, I don't want to say any spoilers, but must see it. If you like superheroes. 100%. Uh, I love it. I loved it. it. And the writing is really good. Carl Urban is is bomb, man. Love he is that great. dude. Love I thought he was a great guy. Judge Dredd. A great was, dude. Thank you. Somebody. He was, he was badass. That was so cool. I agree. I had a replica of the the inhalers. That they oh, really? The yeah. I just have weird replica things around. Like, I've got the Inception top. Why do I have it? I don't know. Just to make sure ah. it's not a dream. But I had one of those inhaler awesome. things. I was like, this is so cool. And we, that, that was Cersei Lannister. Yes. Who was Terrifying. Of, yeah, she was really, Sheesh. really solid. With her face all cut up? Yep. Oh. That's, Great. Dude, that's a great movie. You yes. You're kidding. It's really fun. Really, really fun. I've been watching this show. It's like it's called Guardians of the Glades. It's on What's Discovery, that? and it's this guy from like two hours north of where I am, and he goes out into the Everglades and catches pythons. Oh. Ooh, I'm terrified of snakes. I'm not afraid of many things. Snakes will get me. And to see this dude like wrestle 15-foot snakes with his hands, I was like, what is – what a that's an American hero right there. Do they bite they do, yeah, yeah. In quite a few episodes, they like so where their head is, they've got yeah. like an eighth of an inch of uh, like forgiveness, where they have to grab it exactly right. Because if they grab it too far ahead, they're gonna put their hands in their mouth. But too far back, oh. the snake can spin back around and get them. No, and it's like watching a horror movie. I was like, oh, mother of God, nope, it's crazy. Nope, same, nope. <laughs> same, same, same. Nope. The boys sounds like much less stressful watching, so it's on. So fun. It's it is freaking on. Awesome. Dude, that's so cool. So I'm wondering, when did you – so you've done – I mean, it's everything. <laughs> so you've done video games as well. So what was your first video game you did? Because that's in the acting train. Also with movement comes in handy, I bet. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I the, One of the first video games I did was um, Quake. Oh, Quake sweet. Arena. It was called Quake Arena. And there's there you could choose from a – a small model hero, a medium model hero, and a heavy, like an endomorphic, muscular model hero. And so I, I captured all of the heroes, and we did some of the monsters as well. And sometime Sweet. around that time, I also did something. It was a Star Trek video game. Uh, they, they walked in, and they dro- – this is how long ago. They dropped a <laughs> stack of VHS tapes in front of me. And Classic. they said, 
Your job, take these home, watch all of them, oh. learn everything about the movement of this guy named James T. Kirk. And I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> so I learned how to move like James T. Kirk. And oh, wow, not bad. Not bad. Wow. Not bad. So it was really, really cool. It was, it was awesome. And I got my friends to uh, help on the game. So I had a Uhuru friend. I had a, a Bones friend. And I doubled as Spock sometimes. What? And then one also doubled as Spock. It was really fun. Really, really fun. Did you, was it like one of those suits with like the balls all over it and everything? Yep, yep. Uh, a, a motion capture suit. We did the performance capture. Um, for those people who don't know it, they're listening to your show. Yeah. A motion capture is – it's the technology – that helps in animation. There's two kinds of animation. There's the kind you draw, and yep. then you kind of, you know, you flick the pages, and it gives the illusion of animation, uh, uh, keyframe animation. And then there's another kind of animation, which is motion capture. Motion capture, we put on these really tight suits that have uh, very shiny markers at all the joints, at the wrists, the elbows, the knees, the hips. And we walk into a room called the volume that is surrounded by 100 to 200 cameras. These cameras throw out infrared and that light bounces off the markers that are on our body and goes back to the camera and the camera transmits all that information to the computers and now the computers can make whatever movement we look, whatever movement we do in the volume look like what the character is doing. So whatever we do, a giant ape or a giant lizard or an alien or a person with a gun, that person's doing it in the computer and they animate through that. So we help their cool. animation. Yeah, it's so really cool. cool. It, like, what a time to be alive, you know? That's so cool. It's yeah. really fun. Are they, and so, that, that's why we have all this cool stuff like Marvel and yes. all the kaiju, because it's it's so much easier to do well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you imagine, like, if you were born, like, 30 years prior, you know? Or, like, think about where it's going to be in 10 years. That's another thing. Uh, hey, Dude. Between AR, altered reality, VR, virtual reality, and and deep fakes i mean being able to put anybody's face on anybody else's body and making it look real Ooh. you're gonna see some amazing stuff some scary stuff too I yeah imagine. i was about to say <laughs> equally amazing also terrifying yes yes man so on the when you've got those like balls all over you are those squishy like if you fall on them are they gonna break how durable are in these suits? In old days, they they were hard. So okay. we hit around, they would punch into our body, and we'd be all bruised up. Ooh. Now they're squishy. They're squishy sponge with uh, very shiny bits of tape all over it, and it's much more comfortable. We don't feel it anymore. That's cool. Good for you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they started Fortunate. listening a little bit. You're like, I've yes. already broken four ribs. Not so but, bad anymore. You know. Yeah. I'm fascinated by process. So anything like that, I'm like, what? I ask those questions, you know, like, are these one no. size fits all or like, how does it, so are there sizes? They come in sizes? Like regular Absolutely. sizes? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There's, there's uh, sizes for kids, sizes for medium, large. They have motion capture suits for horses, for dogs. Oh, what? Uh, they're not, they're not the same as ours, but they can capture the motion from horses and dogs, which they do for certain movies uh, and video games. They do that often now. That's cool. That's yeah, really neat. It's really, really neat. Sometimes we we do the creatures, but sometimes when you just need a dog running around and doing what it does, or a horse loping through the scene, uh, they'll they'll go through the trouble of capturing it. So you're doing that because I remember a rid like early on video games and stuff. It was a lot of voice acting. It was voiceover where you're in a booth and you record the dialogue, and then it made that switch to performance capture. So like um, they still do it. They still do voice voice acting quite a bit. I, oh. I do a bit as well. Um and, and Oftentimes, it sometimes it's the voice actor that goes into the motion capture space. That sometimes cool. the voice actor and the motion capture, uh, the performance capture artist are two separate people and they never meet each other a lot of the time. Oh, um, I it's just, like the it, one. If they did meet, is, they'd have to is. kill one and then yes. absorb the power. Sure. I get it. <laughs> <one>. Yeah. <laughs> I like that's right. But no, yo, uh, we, I just did, uh, I worked on a project called Vader Immortal. And yes, they congrats, Vader. by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. I finally am in the Star Wars universe. You yes! are. Get it. Get it. it and awesome. nominated for some pretty big deal stuff. Yes. Dude. Yes. Uh, Vader Immortal was nominated for an Emmy. So yes. it's really, really exciting. You're an so, Emmy. I, you might be the only Emmy nominated Darth Vader. Think about that. Most excellent. That's right. Whoa. <laughs> see? That's so it's, cool. It is really neat. It is really, really cool. Dude. So what, what was that like? Yeah, being Darth Vader. What? 
it is mind blowing. Again, super top secret project. They never tell us what we're working on. Of course. Like, hey, uh, you can use the sword, right? I'm like, of course. I'm like, can you show us some sword stuff? And I was like, okay. They're, now they're calling from San Francisco, and and I was uh, like, okay, what kind of sword stuff do you want? Do you want pirates? Do you want fencing? Do you want samurai? What do you want? Um, you know, just sword, just just <laughs> sword stuff. What? All uh, right. Okay, fine. <laughs> Just threw something on tape. I didn't know what they wanted, but I made it look kind of fancy because I figured it was a video game. They don't want boring stuff. Right. And like, great, great, great. Didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks. Like, okay, come up. I'm like, uh, okay, where am I coming to? Oh, uh, ILM. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <"On."> <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. What? Is, so what is that? What is that stage like in, in that sort of workspace? It's awesome. That place is covered in. ILM memorabilia from Ooh. Star Wars to Indiana Jones, the Scorpion King. There is so much amazing stuff. The entire building is a giant museum of uh, Ghostbusters models, uh, Slimers up there. A, Dude. A giant picture of, of the, the ghost guy, the Renaissance picture. I can't remember what his name is right now. But all of it, all of it is there. What? There's dinosaurs up there. This all this amazing stuff all over the building. It's spectacular. Dude, see, that's the best acting you ever did in your life was maintaining calm in that situation. <laughs> did not maintain calm. <laughs> I geeked out. I came around the corner, and Han Solo is frozen in carbonite. Oh, and I'm like, come on! Dude. You guys got this on your wall? That's awesome! Like, yeah, we took it from Java. Oh, my God, it's the real one! <laughs> <laughs> and it was the real one. It was the one that you see in the movie. It's just it's in there. Oh my and God. They, they have the editing machines and corners and, and everything. It's really, really neat. Dude, had you been there before? Um, no, I've been there several times because it's a long shoot. But but uh, now, but that was my first time. When they took me on the tour around the building, it was just spectacular. Dude. They that have some of the incredible. sets from all of these. Yeah, it's nuts. What? And then, so you've done you've done quite a bit of performance capture, actually. Oh, yeah. I'm probably the eldest of all of the performance capture artists. I'm the one who's done it the longest, probably. Yeah? What's, the, what's the biggest change you've noticed from when you started to now? I'm, the technology yeah. constantly changes. Aside from that, that's it. I mean, it's always been performing. The better performer you are, the better uh, product you get at the end. But uh, people becoming aware of it is probably the biggest thing. Aside from the technology changing itself and the power the technology people becoming aware of what it is and some of the people that are doing it not very many people not many very many of us are known unfortunately because they don't yes. credit us that's quite. why i'm here i think <laughs> uh godzilla doing godzilla king of the monsters yeah very first times i got credited in a film i mean i've done lots of films now sure uh, between avengers and everything green lantern avatar all these movies but what uh very rarely do we get credited uh, in the credits for it. For now, there's a time. Yes. There's a change coming because I'm yes. sending flares up every chance I get. Thank you, thank you. Dude. That and we need to get uh, for my stunt friends. We need to get stunts and to yes. the Oscars. It is absolutely necessary for all the hard work. I mean, hundred percent. Down action movies make more money than all the other movies combined. Yep. Period. And action movies ride on some people's uh, muscles and back and spine and skeleton. So they need to be included in the Oscars. They do some of the hardest work in the business, and they have to heal afterwards. And we need to recognize that. 100% agreed. I may or may not have had a few stunt guys on the show. Just saying, they're amazing. And the amazing. stuff that they can do, I mean, yeah, it's with their bodies. And also, like, let's throw them into a wall. <laughs> It's like, yeah, all right, absolutely. cool. And so with performance capture, what do you think? Because it's such a specific style of performance as well. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot more imaginative. It's very theater. Uh, yeah, what it's... do you think is the key to a good session like doing performance capture? Is there a thing that you're like, this this will this will kick you up if you're doing performance? Um, a little pro it, maybe. Uh, it depends. It depends it, because there's – everybody thinks of it as if there's only one – part of it there's two major paths mm -hmm. in uh, performance capture there is uh navigations which you only encounter in 
video games. Navigations are in-game movements. Anything oh. any of the characters do or, or the hero does needs to be captured, period. Right. Walking, turning direction, tying your shoe, fidgeting, idling, breathing, scratching your head, shooting the gun, getting shot, any of that stuff needs to be captured. And that is the realm of the action actor and the stunt people oftentimes. That is not necessarily for actors. Then there's cinematics. Cinematics, it's the acting bit. It's, we have to go over that hill and capture that rise. Let's go. And All then you right. go back to game. that stuff. And but, but those scenes, that is the realm kind of of the actor and the action actor. So you, you, if very few of us can work in both worlds because not too many people have both skill sets. There's a tiny group. But if you're an actor, you need to be a damn good actor. Period. Sure. And hopefully you have some physical skills under your belt that will augment your chance to get in. But for the most part, be a good actor. And if you're on the action actor side where you want to do navigations, you need to have your skills, you know, on point. You've got to be good at guns, good at swords, good at fighting, good at martial arts. Helps a little bit as well. Uh, if you're going to be a wrecker, if you're going to be somebody who gets blown up and can take the falls, then you need to be good at wrecks and all of that stuff. But you have to have all your physical skills on point. And that's kind of some of the stuff that we teach at the Mind's Eye Tribe. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like a lot of people talk about like voice acting and getting into stuff like that. It's like, be a good actor first, and then you can go on from there. And like the people you're competing with are at this level, so get to that level and then put your hat in the ring kind of thing. Absolutely. That's cool. I didn't realize that like the navigation actually walking in the game and cinematics is two different things. It makes a lot of sense because it yep. real for like the movie parts. Very different groups of people. Wow. Yep, had no idea. And I know, dude, you mentioned Marvel. You've done some pretty cool stuff involving superheroes. Oh, it's so fun. Dude. Dude. I grew up reading comic books. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite superhero? Um, Ask the hard I got, questions here. I got a bunch, but but I grew up reading Silver Surfer. That one was Ooh, my favorite. Ooh, nice. Good one. My friends were like, and we always, my friend, like I mentioned Van earlier, and my other friend Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, Van is a Superman fan. Jason is a Hulk fan. Nice. And so we all be getting these prolonged nerd arguments. <laughs> They're stupid. <laughs> Dumbest thing ever. Dude, you know Superman's stronger than Hulk. Nobody's stronger than Hulk. Everybody knows that. Nobody. He'll smash Superman, then he'll smash Silver Surfer. Dude, Silver Surfer controls the power cosmic. It's true. All he has to do is suck out all the gamma radiation out of the Hulk. He doesn't have a chance. See, that's yep. why Superman has a chance. Superman doesn't have a chance because I'll take the fight <laughs> to a red sun, and, and that's where the fight's going to happen. Now you're going to do See, that's why Hulk doesn't have problems. Oh, my God. It goes on for hours. It's the dumbest, dumbest thing. People listen to us like we're – seriously, we have mental issues, and it, it is All the best people do. Awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> the old Norrin Rad. Not bad at all. Not bad at nice all. Nice call, man. You I know mean, your superheroes. I mean, I don't want to brag. and I might know some superheroes that you've worked on, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Let's ah. just take a stab in the dark and say Colossus and Iron Man. I don't know. <laughs> So what is it? What's it like being a superhero? Being growing up, be, liking superheroes and whatnot, being such a big fan, and then getting to embody one. Dude, it's again. First off, didn't know what I was doing when I got to the studio. Oh, that, same. <laughs> same <laughs> thing. Not a, walked in, and there's a larger group than normal, and they're like, "Hey, we're from Marvel Entertainment." And I was Whoa. like, "Wait, what?" What? <laughs> <laughs> you just throw up a little. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. And, like, all right, we need to do some pickup shots uh, today. This this project is called um, Captain America Civil War. No, You're going to be fighting bit. Cap and Bucky. Uh, what? I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, I'm their friend. I don't know if they got my letters, but we're definitely yes, friends. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but that that's how we started the day. So Dude. I got to do some of the stuff. Now – uh, they they do shoot the entire scene. The stunt people are there. The actors are there. Then, after all that's kind of edited together, D um, Disney and Marvel will have a look at it. And they're like, okay, we don't like these parts. We're going to reshoot or, or we're going to augment some of these performances. So let's go to motion capture. And then oh. that's where I step in. So I, and, and I'll recapture uh, sometimes very small parts, sometimes entire scenes. And uh, we redo it. And it takes days, but they come out with something that they're happy with. And and everybody's happy because it's a huge team effort. Sure. I love watching the credits of those types of movies. I was like, this is going on for a long time. Like, it's, yes. It, 
do it. Even in like the the visual effects houses, it's like here's 150 names from one visual effects house. I was like, man. And then I'm writing absolutely. it down. I was like, get these people on my show. Get this one. Get this one. Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And there's so many there's so many great people. You you need to talk to Darren Ross. Dude. Darren Ross is freaking awesome. He's the one who pulled me onto um, uh, Deadpool. Oh, uh, sweet. He me with Tim Miller. He's a special effects supervisor and an absolutely amazing action director. We work together all the time, and I'll, I'll connect you with him. But sweet. absolutely amazing special effects supervisor, kick-ass dude, and, and he's funny as hell. That's so cool. I, lo- I love stuff like that, learning that like when, what you see on the screen. That's why whenever they have like v- visual effects breakdowns, and you're like, oh, all of that was fake. I was like, what? Yes. Magic. Magic. Yep. An entire land, entire battle, and just one blue screen and four guys. Yeah. Crazy. And then we got to talk about D&D. Yeah. Dude. So I, how long have you been playing D&D? Um, about 40 years. Mother of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what it was like in the beginning, like when you Absolutely. first started? Absolutely. First off, I didn't know anything that I was doing. They showed me the book, and I'm like, "What? I don't. What is Faco? What does that mean?" <laughs> and they're they're like, "Don't don't don't worry about that." Okay, Let's here's what's happening. <laughs> there's a forest, and there's a sound. What do you want to do? And then we started playing, and that was it. And one, we learned one rule at a time. We figured out all the stuff, and you figure it out. And now it's much much easier. Yeah, it's really easy to get into. It's really really easy. But back then, it was just us playing in school. We played in school. Oh, and I cool. went to uh, Lutheran school uh, in Hawaii. Nice. And, um, a little different. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> during, during chapel, every Wednesday was chapel. And we'd be in the back. All right, what do you want to do? <laughs> I want to sneak up on the orc, and I want to jump on him from behind. Okay, roll the dice. Wait, wait, wait. Wait for the pastor to raise his voice. So the pastor would be speaking, and we tried <laughs> to time it so that I couldn't hear the dice roll on the pew between us. So sometimes we'd miss, we'd miss time it, and of course oh no. you'd get that <laughs> sound really, really loud, and everybody near us would turn around and look at us because they knew what we were doing. Sure. And we were just like, "What? what? <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, it's, it's <laughs> an orc." <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm saving that's a village right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. Dude, so do you do you still have that original pair of dice? Oh hell no! I no. thought they had to have immediately been destroyed. <laughs> back in that time, no, back in that time, they had something that the people who played D and D and and the culture at that time called the Satanic Panic. Yes. And my parents were active in church. Sure. And they would take me to the church all the time, and they had this book burning revival thing. Oh no! And that's where most of my books including my deities and demigods, original edition, the oh. Hellenity, and, it's, <clears throat> and my dice ended up in that stupid, stupid uh. book. Well, that's up a in... good story, though, at least. you know. It is. Like, I didn't lose them. They were sacrificed. Yes, I was so Man. bummed. So bummed. Dude. And you kept playing. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Keep it on because going. Because by then, I had memorized all the rules, so I no longer needed the books. You hear ah. that, Mommy? I don't need the books anymore. <laughs> I've no. become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Oh, God. You did it. You you leveled up. Do you, yes. what, do you remember your first character? I do not, because... You played 700 of them. No, no. <laughs> I remember... Thinking to myself, the, the person who tells the story is called either the Game Master or the Dungeon Master, the yep. DM. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, this story has holes. Why are creatures living in this dungeon with do? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I came into a room, and you said it's, it's his lair, and then there's nothing here. There's no food. There's no water. There's no treasure. Why would anybody stay in a room where there's nothing? This dungeon is redundant. So, it's redundant. I, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Thank you. Point. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um. So I thought to myself, if I did this, in fact, here, give me that book. Move over. I became the DM as soon as I could. There you and go. I rarely play, to be honest. I almost always dungeon master. Really? I do play occasionally now, 
occasionally, usually for streams and stuff like that for mm -hmm. charities. But um, I'm almost always the dungeon master, and I still do it. It's fun knowing the rules. It's fun telling stories. And when I'm not working, I have three games a week. And uh, in fact, I have a game in two hours. So Ooh. yeah, it's, <laughs> everybody's coming over from all their prospective jobs. We have people from video games, people from movies coming over to play. And it's going to be bananas. It'll be a blast. That's amazing. Three different games? Yep. Three different games, three different groups. Dude. And they're all in the same world and all of their groups affect each other. What? How do you keep track? Bananas. Um, It's pretty easy because the story that they're revolving around is kind of the same. So it's oh. not like they're all crap. They're all, they all have their things. That's smart, connecting them all. So you're like we, technically I, doing three sections of a big world. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of fun. And I work, I, 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 for fun, I play a video game called League of Legends. It's Nice, nice. It's it's my my guilty pleasure. That's your and one? Yes, yes, it's, the, it's my, my go-to. After I'm done with Horizon Zero Dawn, I always go back to play League of Legends, whatever. So... Uh, I just took all of the characters from League of Legends and I dumped them into my campaign. Love and that's it. who the players are. So all the players are League of Legends characters and uh, they're all kind of dealing with each other's choices and it's fun. So that makes what? it a little bit easier. The universe is persistent and uh, it affects each other. Sure, sure. Do you, so do you, you play and you DM as well. You're mainly a DM. Do you, what do you like better about DMing and what do you like about playing? I love – well, playing is acting. So I yep, get to, to be a character. Now, on the other hand, a lot of the people that I play with, I don't think they expect – except for Deborah Ann Wall, I have to say. <laughs> She's you know incredible. Who she is? Oh, yes. She is freaking amazing. She is the bomb. I agree. She's the one person that I turned to in character, and I went, oh, hello. You're a halfling. And she goes, I am. And I was like, <laughs> yes. oh, my God. Yes, she yes, answered yes. me in character. She's Love. awesome. Yeah. Welcome. Oh. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> One yes. of us. Yes. She, she matched me move for move, word for word. She had no problem. So we teamed up. It was in a, a game called uh, Legends of Founders 2. It just happened recently. It was uh, Gary Gygax's son, Luke Gygax, who runs it. Yes. And I saw an expose on that. Charity. It's called Extra Life so cool. uh, for children. And, oh, man, we had a blast. He was the DM. Uh, Deborah and I got to team up. Uh, we're two thieves, and she was halfling, so she would constantly lean on my leg and be like, "All right, let's get to business." And yes. She was the top of the dragon <laughs> And I'm like, "Perhaps you should go first. <laughs> she, was, she was awesome. She was awesome. I love that. I, I, so I started playing D and D a year ago. I, uh, I had gotten married, and then I brought all my groomsmen. I was like, "Listen, we've talked about D and D for our entire lives. We're gonna just do it." Oh and hell. Same sort of thing. We bought the Barnes and Noble had like a starter kit, you know, had like the Minds of Fendelver campaign, and you had pre-made character sheets. And same, learn one rule at a time, because the first session we got like one shotted by goblins. We're like, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> we must be doing something wrong. Yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, we like weren't adding modifiers at all and weren't figuring anything. So, <laughs> who even now I'm still like. Okay, I think that's how this works. Trying yeah, to figure it yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same thing. I so something I've learned is like especially the role playing side of it, you will get out of it what you put into it. So if you connect and you have a really good DM as well, you can connect with them and have a full scene together and then you come out at this whole moment with like a halfling that looks at you and is like, Cool, I'm halfling. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, it's so fun. And that's and that's what I gotta be in a DM is those moments that uh, my character had with Deborah Ann Wall, for instance, those were just us riffing back and forth in character. But the yeah. dungeon, he gets to be all the characters that all of the other players speak to. True. So I get to be several characters all night long and all different, and they all have different points of view. They all want different things. And it's really fun to flick through all of those, which is basically what I do on a video game set. They'll be like, all right, uh, now you are a Chinese shop owner, five years old, and Spider-Man's going to walk into your shop, and you're going to say, Spider-Man, what are you doing here? So that's what I do. I become that character physically, and then the model is represented properly on the uh, computer screen. Then the next scene, okay, now you're a cop, and you're trying to stop the thug, and Spider-Man's chasing him, but you can't stop him. So you say, that way, Spider-Man. 
So I'll become that guy. So it's always something different. And it's the same thing. So DMing is basically like a master class in characters and acting. It is absolutely, 100%. I love it. I, I've, that's something I've learned as well as far as acting goes. It's, it's If you can commit to it, you're getting experience being characters. And then you have yes. these environments, you know, creative problem solving and improv. That's yes. D&D. Yep, yep. Do you have a favorite like uh do you have a favorite race in class? Um no. No, not not for me. I I everybody says I'm always curious to hear what people's favorite class is because and and first class, the first one that they choose. Sure. Because it says a lot about them. Ye- oftentimes the first class people choose is something very opposite of them. I can Often, see that. My friend uh, Esteban Cueto, he's a huge stuntman. He works on everything. You've seen him a thousand times. You probably didn't even know it. Mm-hmm. He works on S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He works on all this stuff. He's really big. He's bigger than I am, 6'4", cool. probably 280 pounds of muscle. And he came to the game, and I'm like, all right, Esteban, what do you want to play? Man? I know you've been thinking about it. He goes, I would like a ghost-wise halfling. Yes. And I'm like, yes. wait, you know they're like, three feet tall and they don't they don't they don't talk very much they're, all, they're almost <laughs> yes that sounds very appealing i'm like oh Fair okay enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome it's freaking awesome i love it so i always find that very very interesting uh i'm kind of my 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 go-to is monk or paladin nice because because those are philosophies that I understand. Yeah. Uh, but I also am attracted to wizards because I like intelligence and I like playing that that intelligent type of character. I, I don't know. They're all fun. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. We started the starter campaigns come with, you know, almost one of each class. I got stuck with a fighter and I was like, all right, this is cool. I like this a lot. And it was after, I want to say maybe two or three months of that, then the guy who was DMing at the time, he was like, I think I have an idea for my own campaign. And we're like, hey. Hell yeah, man! Let's do it. So oh, we made our nice. own original characters. We've been playing with those for a year now, and so I've got a ranger that I thoroughly oh. enjoy. It's very I was gonna fun. say rangers are cool, man. I like him a lot. He's basically like Aragorn meets Jon Snow with like me That's in there. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's so fun. That's... And then we have another campaign on Wednesdays that we play, where one of the players, the one of the players and the DM, they switch. So the Sunday DM is a player on Wednesday. And okay. from Sunday is the DM on Wednesday, so we get That's to play. Great. Yeah, and Wednesday we're playing the Out of the Abyss uh, thing, and I play a total ooh, ooh. monk in that one. Oh, how and do you like that? I get to play Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. That is great. <laughs> That's perfect. Yep, it's so fun. So <laughs> does he have a voice? Do you he, make a voice? He does. For him? Yeah. So anytime it's like, oh, we think. Well, I think we should yes. maybe come over here and sit down and talk. And it's like, all right. So, yes. That's so really, it's really Perfect. fun to like double talk because if somebody comes up and they're like trying to get something, I was like, what are you doing? Well, I'm taking a seat. I like your armor very much. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. It's like his go to is like make them feel good about themselves and then they'll give you the information that they don't want to. It's like, that's great. It works every time. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. That's it's, freaking awesome. It's so fun. It's so fun. And from an actor's standpoint as well, it's just, it's the best thing in the world. It's practice for when you're in between auditions. Ah, uh, it's cool. perfect, man. That's great. That's 100%. really great. It's so much fun. So, so I've heard that you ran a 15 year campaign. Oh, yeah. Wow. You have good information. I mean, yes. do I know my stuff? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I just think that is, I have so many questions. First off, how? Um, one, one week at a we, we we were younger then. This is probably over well over 20 years ago. I, it was when I first got to California probably, and people just started coming over on, was it Saturday? We had two nurses. We had oh, two sweet. nurses, and one one was an older dude, and one was younger than uh, the, the, the other one, and they, they were used to being up all night because they had night shifts. Sure. So they're like, all right. The, the, the kids are taken care of by the wife, and let's play. So we'd start at noon. We'd play till 6 a.m. We'd waddle over to 7-Eleven, get our snacks, and play all day Saturday. And it was freaking awesome. Dude. It, and, and that's how we played for years and years and years. It was called Company. That is the group. Love the it. The name of the group. And uh, we're, we're going to get together pretty soon to 
do a catch up game because some oh, of the players cool. are like, hey, can we can we play? Because we saw you on the stream and it's not fair <laughs> that we don't get to play. I'm like, all right, all right, settle down. Fair settle enough, down. fair enough. Keep your so, horns on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and literally, one of them is a Minotaur. Oh, literally. What? So so his name is Meldicar and Love it. Uh, he's the one with the horns. So it's it's perfect that you said that. But yes, um, Company of the Bull is uh, alive and kicking, and they're they're about to get back into it. I'm, it won't be a regular game because I don't have any more time. But sure. <laughs> we're going to do a couple of one-offs to play catch-up and let them control the world that they've created because that's the same world that all these other people are playing. Oh, that's cool. Was it was it Company of the Bull because the guy's a Minotaur? Because that's really cool. uh, Yeah, kind of. Yes. It, 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 it didn't start as that, but uh, eventually it became Company of the Bull because the guy's a Minotaur, yes. That's so cool. I always wonder that how groups like get names and whatnot. Because we had... Yeah. We had one where, like, our group, the Sunday one, we went to a bar, and, like, when we all met, and we're like, all right, two, and we're getting to know each other, and when we agreed to work together to go on these quests, we were like, to the t- to the tentative alliance, because we're like, we're not sure if we're going to be friends yet, but not quite, and one of the guys was super drunk, so when he did the toast, he's like, to the tentacle alliance, <laughs> and we've been the tentacle alliance ever since. That is awesome. <laughs> Organic moments, those sort of things. That is, that's the fun of it. That's the best part. I agree. I agree. And we're only level – on Sunday, we're level six. So we're still learning and trying to figure it out. But well, Six put, is pretty solid. You can do some good stuff now. Yeah, you can. Cool. When you do one-shots, do you – what level do you usually write them at? I do not do one-shots. I do. Um, if I can't tell an entire story, I don't enjoy it as much. I so um, one-shots are no fun for me because it there's no personality. It's just – you're right. I'm going to drop into this situation. I don't know who your characters are, and I don't know what this means to you. For me, that's like watching the action part of an action movie, but not knowing how the it story. started. Yeah, okay. I like that. You get like a lot of runway, and that way when stuff happens later on, it means yeah. a lot of stuff. It means something to you, and, and that's uh, one of the bigger parts uh, that people need to learn when they're playing is – this is a story, and the reason you're in it is because you care. And if you don't care, why play? So that's one of the big parts. I agree. I agree. So cool. So when you're running a 15-year campaign, like how do you divvy out? Like, like because I know there's experience points and there's like milestone level ups. Mm-hmm. Which one did you go for for a game that long? Back then, there was no milestone. There was only experience points. Okay. Um, so it, it, milestone has only become a thing in the last couple of edi- editions, but. Uh, for us, we use the experience system still. Um, cool. I still give experience uh, based on what monsters you guys have dealt with, but to entice the role playing at my table, I use something called the check system. I learned it from a friend. Oh. But um, the checks are whatever you do in character. You, let's say your your turtle monk said what he said. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Oh, I like your armor. It reminds me of mom." Well, everybody laughs, but it makes sense. In the perspective of a turtle who right. has a shell. And that tells me that makes sense for your character. Put a check on your page. One check is worth 50 experience points. Oh. And I'll say that all night long because people who are doing stuff in character, talking in character, and acting in character, I give them checks. If you do something like, hey, I'm three rooms away, but he's opening the chest with treasure in it. I want to look in the chest. I'm like, dude, you're not even in the same room. <laughs> you're not even close. So you get any checks for that. And they start to realize, oh, but if I role play this, if I have a reason or if I'm in character, then I'll get experience. Okay. So now Smart. everybody role plays and they, they go for that experience because the people who role play the most get the most experience. That's such a genius idea. Gets everybody dialed in. And, mm-hmm. then, and then you just have a better time because you're all there. And then you have these yeah. real moments. But that's, so, that's a great idea. It's really fun. And then when you do like major things for your character, like uh, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You finally fight that guy. You finally meet that guy. Or you finally find out some information about that guy through role playing. Yeah. I'll say put a check in a circle. A oh. check in a circle is 10 times your level. It's 100 times your level uh, in experience. Nice. So it's significant uh, for whatever level you might be. Because it's a big moment for your character. So we use checks, and then we use checks in circles. And then at the end of the night, you cash all those in to see how much experience you got. And we continue on from there. 
That's cool. That also that makes people want to role play more as opposed to like just getting experience from just like mowing down a village. Yes, yes. Because ah. you're getting experience all the time. No matter what you're doing, uh, I want to go check on the proprietor of this place and make sure that he's okay. Check on your page. And you go and you do that. And yeah, that's how we do it. That's genius. Uh, do you have any like really good stories of moments like that that came full circle where you're like, this happened? Uh, yes, but out of context, everybody listening to it will be bored. Except yeah. <laughs> and I, I know this because people tell me about their D&D stories all the time. And they're so excited. God bless them. I love it. But I wasn't there, so I have no idea what you're talking about. So my fighter, he jumped off of this roof, yeah. and he landed <laughs> Frosted, and he said, Frosted, this was for my mother. I'm like, cool. oh, yeah, yeah, I can see how that would be a – yeah, fel, yeah, that's what you get, Frosted. That's yeah, what yeah. you get. That was for his mom. That's a good point. But, but those moments, that is w- with your friends there. That's what makes the game. Yep. But but sharing it doesn't hit as hard. It never hits as hard. So I'm not going to tell you stories that you won't understand. But I'll tell you that um, having those stories amongst yourselves are worth gold. And and the people that I played with and that I grew up with playing with and that I play with now, each group has their own stories. And we, we retell them all the time. I will tell you one. That <laughs> Wore you this, down. <laughs> there's, there, we had this one player. He missed major cues all the time. He was hilarious. So <laughs> I set up his character. He was this kind of Columbo character. He was a super smart detective, super cool, wearing a trench coat and a cowboy hat. He walks into a burning village with the rest of the party. And he's the one who's going to – he's a tracker. He's the one who's going to track down what happened. Sweet. So he works into the burning village. That entire village is burned down. And he walks to a door frame. There's a door. Door's still all charred and black. And uh, there's a broken arrow fletching, and it's still smoldering. And he goes, oh, okay, I picked that up. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, no. you pick up, you pick up the, the fletching, you, you pick up the end of the arrow. And he goes, I light my cigar with it. I'm like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's cool. He takes the cigar out of his mouth. He looks around at the other party. He goes, I wonder what started this fire. <laughs> and they're all looking at him like, dude. <laughs> Are you, are you joking right now? <laughs> He's like, what? He did not know. I swear to God. Oh, my God. We were crying for a half an hour. <laughs> we were laughing so hard that he missed. The moment. <laughs> <laughs> the moment. <laughs> he missed it. He missed it, all of it. But we were laughing so hard we could not stop for a half an hour. And he's like, oh my God. what are you guys laughing at? Yeah. You know something I don't <laughs> <laughs> As he's still holding the arrow. I don't, you want... <laughs> he starts pointing at people with the arrow. Do you know? Do you see anything? <laughs> yes, yes. It was just like that. So moments like that are freaking gold. We have tons of those. Uh, every character has their own little glitch, and they all have their own moment in the spotlight, and they all have stories. It's really great. That's amazing. Do you, so, so many. How long? So, you've been playing for like forty years. Have you been DMing for that long? Because you started yes. shortly after. Yes, Do you yeah. have any tips for people that DM now? Um, I ask, it's all I about the hard story, ones. Really, you know, one of the things I will say is, it make it about the characters. It, it, a lot of DMs forget that this is in the end. It's all about the heroes. And that people want to be heroes. Now, I'm a really harsh DM. I make you work for it. Yeah. And I ain't gonna give you, I'm not going to give you a plus one anything. Good luck. <laughs> but you're, if you fight long enough and you, you come out the other side, the story, you're going to be more heroic. You're gonna, you're, of course, you're going to find gear and stuff. But it's all about the heroes. If you can make them feel like heroes a little bit, then that's kind of what it's about. Uh, read the hero's journey. If you can understand yes. a little bit of that by Joseph Campbell, mm-hmm. uh, Hero with a Thousand Faces. If if you can understand a little bit of that, then you start to get it and you understand what the hero expects. And if you watch lots of movies, you probably already have an instinct for it. So, yeah, make it about the characters. Don't try to kill them. Back, in, back when I was a kid, you, you kind of feel like it's the DM versus the players. Right. And I got to <laughs> players. And that, you set up this weird thing. It's not. It's you're all you're all telling the story and they're adding to it. And you're adding to it. 
And uh, so try to make that happen and, and make it about them. I think it's a good idea. It's gonna, it feels the story as well. They feel a part of it. And then everyone has more of those moments we talked about. Absolutely. That's pretty neat. Have you, have you lost characters? Um, I have seen Ooh. characters lost. And because it happened in my game. I, I don't say I killed them because sure. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I did. But, but, I mean, here's another story that I tell at cons sometime. Mm-hmm. We, I play with a, a girl named Hope Lavelle. And she's a great actress, great stunt woman. But she ha- she's, she's a cute little redhead. And she plays a character named Penelope Halfpite. And a little halfling. And she decided to climb up a sewer grate away from the party. Oh. Rule number one, never split the party. But she wanted to go up the sewer grate. So everybody's like, okay, go scout. But be careful and come right back. So she climbs up the rope. And, and they're like, wait, 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 wait. Get back here. We're going to put a rope on your foot. Just in case you get in trouble, we can pull you back. So they Smart. tie it around her ankle. She goes up the sewer grate. She climbs, climbs, climbs. She gets to the top. It's pitch black. Halflings cannot see in the dark. Right. She, I was like, all right, it's pitch black. And it's kind of humid and it smells in here. She goes, uh, I get out because that'll be fun. I'm like, Uh-oh. are you sure you can't see anything? I mean, there's dim light way, way behind you, but it is – you can't see – you can't even see your own hand. It's okay. I'm like, all right. Oh. You put your hand on the edge, and you pull yourself out, and something crunches underneath your palm. It's dry. It's brittle. Oh, no. It crunches, and it sounds like dice. Hits the ground. Oh. She's like, oh, is it dice? I'm like, probably not, but what do you <laughs> Fair. Because I climb out. I'm like, all right, your foot crunches on more of the dice stuff, more crunching, more snapping, and now you hear something go, oh, God, in the room. She goes, oh, that sounds cool. I'm going to walk towards it. Everybody's like, oh, no. what? Look at everybody else. Say a thing. Oh, no. You say you're not there, so you hush. You, what would you like to do? She goes, oh. I would like to go towards the sound. I'm like, are you sure? Because you can't see it, but it sounds big yeah, yeah. I, i'm i'm a halfling and i feel pretty lucky yeah. I, i'm gonna all right so she crunched 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 through the the dry crunchy things bones she oh, could not know and she walked right up she was in the lair of a troll who had just given oh. birth to three troll children and it was very protective so oh, she no. didn't she right up to it and i and i'm like are you sure uh. because it sounds irritated. Whatever you're walking towards sounds irritated. She goes, yes, this will be great. I was like, okay, great. I turn back to the rest of the party. All right, what are you guys doing? And she's like, wait, I was just walking towards something. I'm like, I'll be right back. Oh, uh, no. What are you guys doing? They're like, um, we're just waiting. We have the rope, and, and uh, we're going to start fire because this might take a while. So I was like, all right, great. You guys notice that the rope starts to go. Oh, no. They're like, grab the rope. Grab the rope. They jumped. They grabbed the rope, and they start tugging on it it's getting yanked hard and she's like wait i didn't do to run what are you talking about i'm like no 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 you're you're fine so i went oh, back to them oh, and no. made some rolls to see if they could hold on to the rope they barely held on to the rope and then they started dragging it back we get it back we get it back we pull they pulled it back and it came back with a foot attached oh man and oh. hope is sitting there looking at me like huh oh, no. i'm like and they're like, wait, where? I'm like, can I have your character sheet? Ooh. She's like, what? What? <laughs> oh, no. She got decimated because you got no chance. Sure. Black. Find against something that you can see you seven times your size in the dark. You're dead meat. And she was fourth level, third level. Oh. No chance. And that was the first time she realized, oh, well, there's consequences in this world. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and it was so harsh. And it was horrible. Oh, man. What a way to go. It's horrible. But it's... I was like, are you sure you want to do that? But all right. Okay. That's the, that's the I've learned is the tell of a kind DM. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> when a DM that's... says, are you sure? Turn around. <laughs> Whatever it is yeah. you're doing, don't do it anymore. <laughs> yes. Yes. Man. That's what makes D&D great, though, I think, is the consequences. Makes it more real. Yeah, you know when there's when there's you make a small decision and that butterfly is later on and you're like, oh, here's that thing. I just gave someone a coin and now they're actually someone of influence in this place. Yes, yes, absolutely, and that's fun. Those moments are really kind of cool. I agree. I agree. 
I'm with you on the rules too. It's like if you, if you can win within the confines of the rules without having to bend them, it's almost like that much more of an accomplishment. Yes. I agree. Yes. 100% agreed. So, we've been talking for over an hour already. Awesome. Whoop, whoop. Dude, so I have to ask beforehand, do you have any advice for anyone who is wanting to do the kind of work that you're doing? Which is um, everything. W- <laughs> it, yeah, it depends. Uh, if you want to be an actor, uh, start taking acting lessons seriously. Go to acting school. Before you even think about moving to L.A., if you haven't already, seriously, take acting seriously because it's a serious business requiring serious talent and uh you want to be prepared so don't and and you may not even like it so seriously go to acting school and see if you love it if you love the art of performing and acting you can't live without that then consider making the move and doing the job but otherwise stay at home because there's a lot of competition and if you only kind of like it or you only kind of want to be famous you're gonna hate this life yeah art (laughs) I spent literally 15, 20 years as a starving artist. I knew I was going to be that because I was a dancer and I was an actor, and I was okay with it. I loved, it. I loved performing, and it, it fed my soul. But if, if you're not loving it, then skip it because there's a lot of other more fun things to do, and you can hang out with your friends and have money and stuff, but acting is not the thing to get you there unless you absolutely love it. I think that's a – and where, where can people find you online to tell you how awesome you are? Oh, oh, well. <laughs> Another service I provide. You tell me how awesome I am. Yeah, indeed. Yep. There's several ways. Several ways. <laughs> First off, uh, you can uh, find me at mindseyetribe.com. Mindseyetribe.com. Yes. Uh, that's the Action Actors Academy for people who want to learn uh, action acting, acting and uh, action skills and creature movement skills, how to use a sword, how to use tactical weaponry, how to move like a monster, all that stuff, that's where you go. Uh, I'm on Twitter at TJStorm01. I'm at uh, Instagram at uh, StormZEYE, StormZI, or you can just put TJ Storm and click the one that looks like me. And, uh, of course, Facebook is there as well. So Facebook and TJ Storm, and, again, it's the one that kind of looks like me. And, yeah, that's it. Mind's Eye Tribe is the easiest, but all the other ones are definitely usable. Love it. Such a cool idea. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.